Hello. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Hi, Mary. Okay. Hey, Haley. <laughs> Hello, internet world. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're here today to talk about what a functional nutritional practitioner, therapy practitioner is, is a mouthful, and how it can help you. Um, we're going to talk about why we became FNTPs for short, and um, yeah, our history, our everything. So, you know, we just kind of like jumped on the scene and everyone's like, we're trying to like help a lot of people, but if you don't understand what we do and why we do it, it's hard to get those messages across. So um, before we begin, I just wanna share that this presentation is only for educational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose or treat or cure disease. And if you have any questions or if you decide you wanna work with us or if you wanna make any changes in your own life on your own, that's, um, we 100% support that, but just make sure you speak with your healthcare professional about any new dietary choices or supplements that you are taking because sometimes they do interact with any medication you might be on and we wanna make sure you're all, you're all safe and protected and that uh, we're on this healing journey together. So I'll give you a brief introduction, and uh, I can't even talk to <laughs> I will give you a brief introduction of myself. My name is Mary. Uh, I help individuals who suffer with fatigue to have increased energy, clarity, and focus. Um, I personally know what it feels like to be totally exhausted, um, totally disconnected from the world and those that are around me. Um, I'm a mom of five children. And after a little while, not too long, I realized that doctors could not provide the answers that I needed to help keep myself and my family healthy. They could provide band-aids, but uh, mm -hmm. not preventative measures or things that would help promote health. Um, for me and myself, I dealt with mysterious mm -hmm. fatigue, brain fog, autoimmune issues since childhood. I felt drained. I felt helpless. Um, no one could really tell me why. They would just offer me medications that would only mask the symptoms and the problems. I was determined to also solve my family's health problems. We were dealing with constant illnesses. Um, and it was in, you know, the fear was ingrained into us that we were all going to die from the flu. And I just had a hard time believing that. So I just knew something was not right. With all of our medical and cultural advances, for example, we had running water, sanitation, refrigeration. Um, I started to question why all of our children, not just mine, but just children in general were getting sicker and sicker, developing more allergies than ever before. Um, and also questioning why were we so afraid of these illnesses that have been around pretty much since the beginning of time. Um, so during my time teaching in the public schools and raising my own family, I started to put together pieces of this puzzle um, while also being a health educator. And then during my master's program, I took a class in botany, which like really just opened my, my mind and my eyes to a lot of the things that have been forgotten over generations. And that intrigued me greatly. And I decided eventually to put my health first because, you know, like when you're on an airplane, they tell you to, if you have your kids with you, you have to put your mask on first, make sure you're getting the oxygen um, in order for you to take care of everyone else. So that's what I had to do. Um, also put my children first as well, but I knew if I needed the energy, I had to take care of myself in order for me to help my children. Um, so I sought after nutritional therapists, chiropractors, um, these are people that I consider true healers um, or you know, doctors of healing and health. And over time, I started feeling better. My clarity came back. My, I felt like I was coming out of a huge mental cloud fog. Like, I, like you don't realize how much of a cloud you're in until you're out of it. And when I first felt that, um, that was huge. So I decided I wanted to do what what they're doing or something similar along those lines and help others. So that's why I came to the Nutritional Therapy Association. Um, I'm not perfect. This is, this is, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking, I'm definitely feeling the progress of my healing journey. journey. I don't experience as much fatigue. My brain fog is pretty much cleared up. Um, I'm not missing out on my children's lives, which is a huge thing for me. 
And um, there's an explanation for why we're all feeling the way that we do. And I want everyone to know it's not your fault and there's ways to feel better. So I love to help others to get back to their family and doing things that they love. So that's me in a nutshell. That's great, Mary. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Haley. All right, so I guess it's my turn. Yep. All right, so my name is Haley Lloyd Roby and I'm an FNTP as well. And I currently reside in Southeast Michigan, the Metro Detroit area with my husband, our son, and our five four-legged companions. I was inspired to become an FNTP after my experience with chronic idiopathic urticaria or constant hives with no known cause. Two years, I was covered head to toe with 24 seven itchy hives, extreme fatigue, angioedema, and various allergic like reactions. Neither my primary care physician nor allergist were able to give me any answers as to why I was experiencing these hives or how to get rid of them. Every allergy test ran came back with no allergy present. I had markers for autoimmune disease, but couldn't identify which one. In addition to monthly cortisone shots and daily prescribed Zizol, which was four times the recommended dose, I removed dairy, lectin, gluten, nightshades, sugar, name it, I probably removed it. I knew there had to be answers. And one night at 2 a.m. while cleaning my floors in my kitchen, listening to a podcast, I heard a commercial about the NTA that I'd heard numerous times before, but this time it hit me differently. It was like the prayers had, it was like my prayers had been heard. And this was the answer. I stood in the middle of my kitchen sobbing because something deep down inside of me knew that this was the answer I was looking for. And I was right. Six months into the program, my hives went away. Six months after that, I was medication free and I've been hive and medication free since June, 2020 with no flare up since I was right. It was the answer I had been looking for. And although my journey with the NTA started as a way to find answers for myself, it quickly became something I knew I wanted to do as a career. If the program could help me find answers, I wanted to help others find the answers they were looking for as well. I know what it feels like to feel defeated. When you feel that you are doing everything right, yet your health isn't improving. And when you're not getting the answers or solutions to what's ailing you, and now here I am on a mission to save gallbladders, helping my clients support their body so that they can help, so that they can keep their gallbladder and help educate and support those that um, have had their gallbladder removed. It's not a useless organ. It's, it serves a purpose and it has a function. And without knowing how to support your body after your gallbladder has been removed, you could end up with other health issues down the line. For example, chronic idiopathic urticaria. As an NTP, I get to help individuals optimize their health so that they can thrive. This brings me more joy than you can imagine. And I love what I do. And I'm so grateful for the experience I had because it led me to the NTA. Thank you, Haley. Mm -hmm. So the next slide, do you want me to put that yeah. one? Go ahead, rip that bandaid off. All right. So I shared a little bit of my, uh, my story, but now I want to share with you my journey with it pictures. So these are some pictures of me that um, during, from 2017 to 2019, um, I was covered in hives head to toe. And, and keep in mind, these are the pictures I'm comfortable with showing you. Of course, there's a lot of others, but um, it's not easy to be this vulnerable. But this was me. And as you can see in, in, in this person's eyes, she's defeated. She's looking for answers, but no one's, no one's helping her. Cortisone shots would give, you daily, give me like relief for a day, but not the itchiness. It would take the swelling down sometimes, but I didn't leave my house. My hair was falling out. I shaved my head three times, maybe four times. I can't remember. And I could barely get off the couch most days. I felt miserable. I was tired. I couldn't eat anything because I removed everything thinking that it was the cause of why I was having all these issues. And it wasn't, it was just an imbalance in my body. And when I learned to make changes to my diet, my lifestyle, removing environmental toxins as I could made an impact. And I learned that through the NTA 
and gradually, and I'm gradually and still, I've had improvements. So I have, like I said, I've been high free since June, 2020. Um, and I'm still on my health journey. I'm not, um, I'm not done yet. And I don't know if I ever will be, I mean, I'm 43 years old and it took me a long time to get to where I'm at and health doesn't change overnight. So I just want to share these little pictures with you. So yes. even, even when you feel defeated, know that there is hope. Yeah. Thank you so much for being so vulnerable and sharing this. Cause I know this was not easy mm -hmm. and, but I'm sure many people will be able to relate and yeah. connect with you and maybe even share your story with others that are going through the similar thing and obviously some of us have outward health issues that show on the outside some of us have health issues that are more invisible that are inward so health comes in all mm -hmm. diseases come in all different forms and shapes and you know this is just some examples of oh this. and I, I you're absolutely right but I like to mention this all stemmed from getting my gallbladder removed yeah, you want to quickly bring it, up that well, time frame? Yeah, so I just, I mean, I finally uncovered it and it was the impact from getting my gallbladder removed because the gallbladder removes toxins from your body and does other things like emulsify fats so that we're, you know, able to absorb them. But what happened is with the, um, with the production of bile never stops. It always continues, however, and not, not enough bile with a, with, uh, when you don't have enough bile in your system, it, it's unable to move the toxins away. So years and years of not having proper bile production or um, impact, it led to toxins building up in my body. And then it is exhibited as hives and, and, and random angioedema. So, so you were, um, I think you told me you were like doing a low fat diet before. Is um, that why you didn't have enough bile? Um, yeah, good question. So, um, well, the yo-yo dieting, poor choices in health throughout my entire life, low fat diets. Um, I was vegan. I was vegetarian. I tried them out all. And the, the low fat diet probably impacted it the most because we need fat, um, for our body to function properly. And with all those yo-yo dietings, low fats, it, impacted my gallbladder so that's what led to my gallbladder having to be removed yeah i remember we learned in in school like those that are on like the low fat diet that decide to change to like usually like a high fat diet or whatever it's like in the popular at that time if you're going from a low fat to a high fat quickly your body needs time to adjust to produce more bile and it can also lead to like a bunch of other yeah like domino effect of and, and it was more than just, it was more than just that my bile production, my digestion was not right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know I had, I burped all the time. Like people tease me, they would know when I was around because I burped so much and so loudly. And I ca had constant um, acid reflux. So there was signs that something was wrong way before, but I, I had no clue. I just thought it was typical to have acid reflux and burp like a trucker. I mean, I don't really <laughs> Right. Like I just thought, oh, that was normal. I had no clue that, um, something was out of balance in my body. So, you know, it was w once I addressed my digestion, which, which bile production is part of your digestion. If you didn't know, um, yeah, things started to change. And also I shared with Mary, I think last week that what triggered my gallbladder attack was taking an Herbalife supplement. Because it doesn't happen for everyone. Just so that everyone knows it's not like it's just to put it out there and everyone develops a, you know, yeah. gallbladder attack after herbalism. I was going to say, say that. <laughs> I, that's just happened. Yeah. So what my point is, yeah, it doesn't happen to everyone, but the reason why it happened to me is because I had a burdened liver. I had a burdened liver, burdened, um, um, gallbladder and my diet, my pathways weren't open. So that's what triggered it is because my, the toxins, it, it, Herbalife, it was a good product, but it was so good that it pushed too fast and it caused, it caused some pain. So it caused your body to release a bunch of toxins too quickly. And your liver was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like we yeah. can't handle this. And then it was like done <laughs> yeah, was too much, too, too much, too quickly. So oh, um, yeah. So, all right. Well, that's enough about me. So let's move on we'll talk about a uh, nutritional therapy in itself and what it is. Cause most people don't know what it is. It's not a diet. It's not, it's, it's not a trend. It's, it is uh, an approach to your health. Yeah. So nutritional therapy, what we have been taught and many others, the thousands of people that have gone through the program 
It is a foundational holistic approach to wellness that focuses on allowing the body to heal itself through a properly prepared, nutrition dense, whole food diet, and also a well-balanced lifestyle. So it's looking at the mind, body, and soul, the entire being, not just like one little part of a person's diet or health. Yeah, there's more to it than just one aspect of it, for sure. So then we're gonna get into like the meat of what we do is which is, we consider them the foundations. And the foundations that we work off of is digestion, blood sugar balance, essential fatty acid, acids, which is healthy fats, mineral balance, hydration, and hydration on top of a nutrient dense, properly prepared whole food diet. Um, we look for the imbalances within these. If you're not, if you're not hydrated, it's going to impact digestion, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a trickle down effect. We do a north to south process where we look at the furthest north, north, which is digestion, and then we work from there. Well, the brain and then down. Well, the brain, yes. <laughs> but digestion starts in the brain, so. <laughs> yeah, like head, shoulders. Neck. Yeah. <laughs> Just with hydration itself is, you know, we look for nutrient deficiencies and um, the most common nutrient deficiency is hydration. And I don't think that most people realize that. So drink your water, people. Yeah. And we'll get, we'll get to that one too. Well. So when nutritional therapy, the main approach is foundational. We want to support the body to heal. We're not healers. We don't cure, like I said in the beginning, um, but we take a foundational approach. Like our body is always, the way we were created was mm -hmm. our bodies are always trying to remain in homeostasis, meaning it's always trying to find balance and work its way out. So if one thing's out of balance, it'll take stuff from other parts to get your body into balance. So our body naturally does that. We're just here to kind of help guide that process. Also, it's a bio-individual approach. Not everyone, that's, it's not a one size fits all. So one specific type of diet or supplement will work for Haley, but it won't work for me versus someone else. Mm -hmm. So we wanna make sure what we do is bio-individual. It's not like you do this and everyone can do this. Cause that's, yeah. if, if we all, our thinking humans, we know that not everything works for everyone else. Mm -hmm. Also the functional approach to it as part of our name, um, we address the root cause of issues. So we kind of go down, down deep, deep, deep into the original root cause of all diseases. And we'll get to that also. And lastly, holistically, it involves the body, mind, and soul, which is if, you know, if you take in the time to do any self-reflection or things like that, a lot of things can stem from early on, things that we've learned culturally that has been passed down, things that we've been through. We're not, again, counselors, it's not in our scope of practice. We know if someone needs counseling, we will tell them to seek that type of help. And we know, you know what's beyond our scope. So we make sure that the person is supported. We make connections with our community, with other practitioners, medical doctors, with counselors, Anyone in our community that, that deals with helping people, we wanna make those connections with them and be able to outsource that help to make sure that they're, everyone's getting the help that they need. Did you wanna add anything? No, I think you do a pretty good job. Okay, so this, yeah, this was a quote that I, I read a long time ago. And when I read it, it was like, pff, like mind blown. Um, Let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of medical doctors, unfortunately, are being taught that medicine, that food cannot be medicine or healing, but that is one of the largest misconceptions. And um, yeah, do you want to add something? Yeah, to well, I, I agree with this, this quote. It's actually on my website because I think it's that important. And um, it's so personally with me and I think with Mary as well, we take a food first approach you know, um, to working with our clients. And I do think that supplementation falls within this because uh, nutrition from food is not as it used to be. Um, but absolutely, I think that we were provided with what we need to survive in, in, in the design of things, right? So the earth provides for us what we need. So I agree. <laughs> All right, so 
Mary kind of um, already mentioned the holistic and the bio individual aspect of it. Um, and this is the approach to nutrition and lifestyle. Or, so let me just start over. We help people achieve health through a holistic and bio individual approach to nutrition and lifestyle. We consider the health of the person as a whole, as she said, with the body, mind, and soul. And each person has a unique genetic, ancestral, and biochemical needs and dietary preference. You know, the way I look at the bio individual aspect is. You know, we've all done, we've all lived different lives, right? Some of us have made better choices than others. Um, some have taken care of themselves. Some has worked on their mind and body and spirit, whatever, and some haven't. And depending on where you live, what, wa what kind of water you drink even, right? Our body had, that's what um, impacts our need for bioindividuality. Would you like to add anything to that, Mary? Yeah, um, the genetic aspect of it. Like some people will ask, well, why is this 80 year old smoking a pack of cigarettes and they look totally healthy, they don't have cancer, but this person will smoke a pack of cigarettes and they'll you know, die within a year or they don't even smoke cigarettes and they'll get lung cancer. Yeah. So like to answer those kind of questions, it's all, it's a combination of things. And like, if you've heard certain doctors talk about it, they mention epigenetics. So we're all given our genes when we're born and there's some things that we're given that can handle a lot of toxins and process that. And I would consider that, I wouldn't say lucky, but you know, if you can handle, if your body can handle toxins, that's a great thing because we live in a very toxic world, but some people need a little bit more support when you're in a very toxic environment. So our, our job is to help support your body and everyone's body, whoever wants to help to deal with those toxins, deal with your environment and deal help you with the genes that you have been given and passed down mm -hmm. so what does it take to be an fntp we get this question a lot right this is not a drive by <laughs> drive by night whatever that saying is like where we just you know go pick this yeah. certificate up it we spend a lot of time um there's we have once graduation, we've accumulated 325 curricular hours across topics such as blood sugar regulation, anatomy and physiology, hydration, mineral balance, and more. Um, Mary and I both, because we are FNTPs, have a minimum of 65 hours in person, hands-on training. And I, I don't know about you, Mary, but I feel like I had so much more hands-on training than that. Yeah, we did a lot. <laughs> all the practices, it was a lot. And then six hours of testing written at that. All right. So <laughs> kid you not, we, um, we've put a lot of work um, to get to where we're at to help people. Yep. A lot of good mentors and studying and lots of wonderful books that we had to read and others that they suggested. So on top of that, we're always continually learning. We're always um, earning more, you know, CEU credits on different classes that we take beyond what yeah. the NTA offers. So a lot of people that graduate with the FNTP, it's a great foundational. Mm -hmm. And then you decide in which direction you want to go. What more do you want to learn and what any other certifications you want to go into? And, and Mary and I um, both are um, course mentors now in the NTA. Yeah. So we, we're we co continuously learning new information or reading more books that they're suggesting that we read. Yeah. <laughs> we read a lot. <laughs> yeah, and we, we attend the classes still with the, the mentors. Um, yeah, and it's great, like as being a course mentor, we get to meet all the new students that are coming in and help guide them as they're like all, you know, bright eyed and, ready to start a new journey. So we're kind of there to guide them and help answer questions. And just, it's a great experience. I love doing that. I do too. I love it as well. So what skills and tools does the FNT possess? Um, so we're going to, the next few slides, we'll show you exactly a lot of the things that we do use, but mainly we conduct an informative interview. So a really detailed interview with our clients. Um, and assessments with them. We, after doing those interviews, we suggest individual foundation supplement recommendations. Not all, usually we do food first, but mm -hmm. a lot of the times, sometimes we need a little extra help with supplements. We conduct an efficient functional clinical assessment and lingual neural testing. If um, I don't currently see clients in person right now, because a lot of my clients are distance, 
but those that are local, I know Haley can speak more on this. She does a okay. clinical assessment in person. We also evaluate food and mood journals. So we ask our clients to do a four day food and mood journal. And that includes something called the Bristol stew chart, which I forgot to add, but we do want to find out how are your bowel movements? What is going on in your stomach? How are you feeling throughout the day? Like, do you notice you feel tired after eating? Do you like, I remember I used to just like pass out at the table right after dinner. I would just sit there and just like sleep. Like literally um, my husband would joke that I had like narcolepsy because I would just fall asleep at the table while everyone's just talking. Um, but that's not normal. Those are all symptoms to look for. Um, we also communicate using appropriate terminology. We help you uh, figure out how to prepare dense, nutrient dense foods. We also help with recipes and meal plans if our clients need that. Did you want to add anything? No, I think it's pretty good. Well, I think that by the time that this this chat is over, you guys are going to know that we believe in bio individuality. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, that it. <laughs> right? There are certain things that's one size fits all, right? Sunglasses, hats, scarves. I can't think of anything else, you know, just, but there's other things that need to be highly individualized. And that's our food. That's the, what's what we put in our body. And it's, um, you know, I, I'm going to speak about like the keto diet or even the paleo diet, even that's a template that I use. And that I don't really consider them diets. I call I consider them templates. They can help, we can build upon them, but there's so much more. Keto is not right for everybody. Paleo may not be right for everyone, which I, you know, I, I do believe that is the most appropriate for most people. But you know, there's AIP, there's that's auto autoimmune protocol. protocol. Um there's intermittent oh, we have fought low FODMAP, there's intermittent fasting. And again, those aren't right for everybody. And they might be right for somebody for a short amount of time, and then they need to move on for something else. So, you know, food should be personal, right? Um, so again, bio-individual, it's, it's, it's a very important in what we do. So here's an, ex uh, an example of one of the most powerful tools that we use, and this is called the Nutritional Assessment Questionnaire, which had like, what, 380 questions? Oh, a lot. A lot yeah. of questions, um, but it gives, it's all, a lot of the symptoms and signs that tell us a little bit more about what's going on inside of you. Um, so it's a standardized questionnaire that enables us, the practitioners, to analyze the client's symptoms and to identify your nutritional needs and prioritize the areas of the body to help support. Um, did you want to add to that? I just want to like add that this is a great tool and this is our power, most powerful tool, I believe, to really get to the root of what's going on. Um, if our client is answering them honestly, um, there's never any judgment um, when you answer these, um, but it really does help it when you, when you're able to, um, cause we take this. We take the, the answers to this and then we dig deeper, right? So we, we dig even further down from this. This is just like our little guiding, our little guiding light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we're, our, our program is, um, what's the word? It's all backed by data, by peer, you know, studied reviews. It's not just like whatever we feel is right is right. We're using data. This is all data driven and the data is empowering because we get to measure your healing over time mm -hmm. so it's empowering for us as practitioners um, to help us to develop tailored bio individual plans that will help our clients to advance on um, their personalized path to optimal health and wellness so Absolutely. these are really important yeah this is i mean I, i'm a person that likes numbers i like to see things i, I i'm not i don't i'm not the type to just believe what someone tells me like i need proof yeah. so Scientific, <laughs> scientifically um bound so right. the, the, it's fine it's founded off the of science all right so this is an example this is my graph a symptom burden graph that i did in december i work with a uh ntp a nutritional therapy practitioner she's not a functional but um they're just as beneficial um 
So, because sometimes we need extra eyes. It's not that I can't handle my own case, but sometimes I don't want to listen to me. So <laughs> I went outside and found someone else to help me. And she ran this in December. And this is kind of what Mary was talking about that we look at progress. So the next slide, please. And this is my graph from a couple of days ago. I should have did the side by side, but I didn't. Um, so you, as you, if you can remember, I a lot of my numbers went down. And this, yeah. So it, my um, <laughs> my liver, <laughs> blood bladder, and small intestines were were a lot higher, as was my um, blood sugar handling. Um, but what I incorporated, the changes that I made, was it was supplemental, and it's made a world of a difference for me. So. I do a knack every two, three months, depending on how I'm feeling to see where I'm going. But the supplementation that I'm currently on and just two more, so this is two supplements that I'm taking um, for this particular issue um, has made a world of a difference. I'm no longer sleepy. I'm apparently digesting my foods a lot better. <laughs> so um, this is just a tool though, for us to see progress, to see if something else um, is spiking. And oftentimes when we work on the foundations, which is the first five, the consequences are the, the later ones. So like um, the vitamin E, adrenals, pituitary and such. Sometimes when we work on the foundations, stuff moved to the consequences only because now the focus can be on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did my graph on here too. I, my last one was February, 2021. And then I did one today just to do the comparison. Yeah. And so this is what Haley was talking about, like the comparison graph. So orange was before and the exclamation marks that are on top shows that it was even like beyond <laughs> what yeah. was measurable. That's how pretty bad it was. So my fatty acids and my sugar handling. Um, so I contribute my um, progress to doing like the restart. I did the restart and we ended a couple of weeks ago. And you see my sugar handling was all the way up here and it's now yeah. in a low priority zone. So that was huge for me. And you see like all like the, you know, the numbers in the beginning that they all represent like the path, like from upper digestion, you know, your throat down to your stomach and it all, all the numbers went down. The, the goal to win this game is you want everything to be as low as possible in the low priority zone. So obviously I'm still a work in progress and that's what we are. We're always going to be that. And so that's right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. I wish I had a chart from when I very, when I first started, because my everything, everything was exclamation marks. I was yeah. like, Oh my gosh, there's no hope. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, no, no, there, yeah. But there is like, so anyway, I, I wish I had that one. All right. So oh, Mary, you want to talk about the food and drill? Sure. Yeah. So here's an example of the food and mood journal. We have our clients fill out um, to get an idea of what they're eating, we ask you to measure your drinks, any drink that you're having, any supplements or herbs. We ask you to record your energy and mood, any movement you did, um, your digestion. This goes back to like seeing if you're having daily bowel movements or not, or, or gas or anything. Um, so this gives us a better picture of your health. So on top of health history and the things that we plan to work on did you want to add anything to this um yeah i don't know if i froze or you did but i'm so i'm not sure what you said but i would like to add this really allows um me to look at it to see if you have any food sensitivities this is always what i'm looking at um i'm looking to see if you're having um maybe a sensitivity to spinach that you're unaware of or when you're experiencing bloating, can we tie it back to what you just eat? How much processed food are you eating? Right. Let's cause we want to reduce as much as we don't want to eat. We eat within what we can afford. I get that, but I want to see how many times you're unwrapping something. I want to see if you're eating on the run. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and Mary's favorite, she wants to see uh, <laughs> digestion reaction. She loves the Bristol stool tart. I love it as well. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but she's very, she really enjoys that. <laughs> well, I want to say enjoy. It's, enjoy. A window. it's a big window for me to see how yeah. you're doing. <laughs> because that can determine 
once we work with our clients a little bit, we can we can see a change in it. If they're experiencing either constipation or diarrhea, and let's get real, most of my clients are either experiencing one of those two. Yeah. Right. And they didn't know that it was a problem. Yep. So we can actually gauge health by what your poop looks like. <laughs> Let's <That's laughs> So we're, we're 40 minutes, so we're going to. All right. We're going to hurry up. Sorry. So here's an example of a recommendation form. So after we go through that whole process, look at your food and mood journal, the interview, then we create this tailored by individual plan that will help you. Um, it's pretty much like a roadmap. So it's like, here's the directions. This is what I feel like based on your history, my education, all those things, this is what would best benefit you. Um, and we give this to you, we go over it, you ask questions, and then we go from there. Did you wanna add something? No. <laughs> it's just an example of what it will look like. As for lifestyle recommendations, we, we do give both nutritional and lifestyle. Yes. And Maybe my favorite, the huh? heal, I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. mean to, I didn't, bad. <laughs> your body has a capacity to heal. And that's what I always say, when our body starts to balance, when it gets the nutrients that it's supposed to have and it needs to thrive, our body has the ability to heal itself. It does all the work. We just need to provide it with the food and nutrients that it needs to thrive. Exactly, I mean, look at all the plants behind Haley. You know, like if she didn't feed them water and the, and mm -hmm. the soil didn't have the nutrients they need, they would all be yellow and dying and brown and not growing. So we're, we're no different than any mm -hmm. other plant or mammal on this planet. Like we need nutrients to survive. We need water, we need sunlight. We need all these things to grow and to heal, to become, you know, to fulfill our most potential that we can on this earth while we're here. Absolutely. Uh, something you wanna just put in is healing is not a linear process. So just like you saw our graph kind of all over the place, we're not gonna just get perfect, you know, by if we take all these supplements, you know, it takes time and reality it will be like a squiggly line. It's, you know, we go, we have our ups, we have our downs and, you know, obviously our life, we don't live in a vacuum. We have stress, we have all these things that are part of our health and our journey. So we just want to make sure that everyone that, you know, we work with understands that it's not going to be a perfect healing straight line process. No. And that's why we're here. We're helping. Yep. All right. So what are the signs? That you, that you need to be working with a nutritional therapy practitioner. All right, I wanna be healthy, but overwhelmed with all the conflicting nutrition advice, right? It's, it's rampant out there. Everyone yeah. has an opinion and that's fine, but we want, we want to find what works best for us, right? You know, I have one or more lingering health issues I wanna address. Mm -hmm. I'm, willing, I'm willing to make diet and lifestyle changes if I see improvement, right? And I need someone who will understand my life and keep me accountable. You know, that's part of what we do, right? We keep, we, we keep you accountable and encourage you, right? To stay on track. And that's why I work with another NTP. Now, I make really good choices, but sometimes I need that accountability aspect. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I reached, I, I figure if I preach it, I might as well listen to myself, right? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we act like a mirror to others. Like, you know, it's hard to see the things that we're doing that might be not, you know, promoting health and to have someone there to mirror back to us. Like we, I think innately, we know deep down what we need. We just sometimes need someone to kind of point it out to us, to show us, you know, and sometimes there's things that we don't see. We do have a lot of blind spots. We're not perfect, um, but yeah. we do deep down know it's there. It just needs to be brought out, you know, brought to light and just that guidance i feel like the, our biggest thing is kind of help guiding people and becoming their accountability partners and teaching them how to become accountable to themselves and just give them that support and like we don't want you to rely on us for the rest of your life we're not like no. wait we want you to learn grow feel better and then move on and even help someone else if you feel that yeah. desire to but we don't want you to become um like relying on us or yeah that's 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 actually my mission statement is to empower individuals to be able to go on without me like I want to give you the tools that you need so that you can do this without me I want to work myself out of a job right <laughs> I mean I I, I there's so many people that need to be helped so we won't <laughs> yeah but you know what I mean like I want to empower yeah. them I, I my 
point is not to keep you with me. Like I want you, I want you to see success. I want you to grow. I want you to have the results that you're looking for. Yeah. Mary. <laughs> so as a nutritional therapy practitioner, we assess your, this is pretty much what we went over, assess your current diet lifestyle. We make recommendations. We answer your questions. We serve as a personal guide and coach and we accompany you on your healing journey. And just, I just realized like, these are just some of the books that were, you know, we had to read for um, the NCA. These are some, a lot of the books I, I'm, I love books and I love having them as resources because if I don't know an answer, I'm going to just go through my books and go through the index and then try to learn as much as I can. So this is a, a journey for us because we're learning as we go along. There's just not enough time. <laughs> and, and that's a good point. We are always learning. This is not something that is giving to us, given to us. I mean, yes, we were given this education, but it's up to us to continue to learn. It is up to us to dig deeper and understand the hard things like blood sugar regulation. That's not an easy an easy subject, right? <laughs> but it's something that I'm always learning on and refining. So yeah, I'm, we have a lot of books. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So do I need nutritional therapy? I say yes. Like we don't even have to read them off. I think that you probably do. So do you feel sluggish and tired most of the time? Get lightheaded and hangry if you don't eat? Um, maybe your energy depends on how much you eat. Um, do you feel like you're addicted to sugar? If you are, we do restart. <laughs> um, do you experience cramping, gas, and bloating? Does your gut feel out of whack? Do you burp? Do you feel bloated? I mean, like, you know Toss what? Stomach aches. Yeah. So um, do you suspect maybe you have food sensitivities? That was part of my issue is I wasn't allergic to anything, but I have food sensitivities. Meaning uh, in 72 hours, you like will have a reaction. So it's not like an immediate re reaction, like an allergy, like your face will get bloated you might look like what's his name but you Hitchcock. could but you yeah. could yeah in my case i don't have any allergies but if i eat spinach or if i eat anything green i will wheeze so like it's learning about what sensitivity mm -hmm. can do to you as well and maybe you just want someone to tell you what's best for you as a bio individual mm -hmm. that's important right like what does our bodies need oh what did i just do i have no clue do you see something? <laughs> I see. I don't know what you did. The time's up, apparently. <laughs> oh, what is that? Okay, never mind. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, that was funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, you may go over the digestive dysfunctions and signs and symptoms. I'm going to do it real quick, okay? All right, so some digestive dysfunction symptoms that you may be experiencing. Um, is excessive fullness, bloating, belching after meals. You may have acid reflux. Um, you might feel better if you skip a meal, if you have less than one movement a day, because remember we want to poop every day, um, or if you have more than one or more than three bowel movements a day, or if you have an urgent bowel movement shortly after eating, cramping or discomfort in the lower abdomen, history of antibiotic use or in the past year, asthma, seasonal allergies, or other respiratory issues, food allergies and intolerances, dry skin, brittle hair or nails. If you experience hive rashes, have eczema, rose, I can't say that one. Thank you. And acne, mood symptoms such as depression, anxiety, and panic attacks and autoimmune conditions of any kind. So I wonder so, if you're watching this, mm -hmm. if you're watching this either now live or later, drop in, in the comments, if you have any of these, I'm not, and I'm not going to reach out to you and try and try to work with you, but pay attention to what you may be experiencing that may be trying to, your body trying to tell you something. Some simple little trip tricks, tips and tricks, <laughs> tips and tricks for some healthy digestion that we normally tell all of our um, clients is eat real food. You know, so if the ingredients list, it has more than five things and there's things that you cannot recognize. It's probably not real. Also, if um, it doesn't have an ingredients list because it came from the shelf of the vegetable section, that's real food. We can go deeper into GMO, but let's not do that today. Um, chew your food slowly. That's huge. You want to make sure your food is mush. 
in your mouth before you swallow it. Cause I tell my kids all the time, your stomach does not have teeth. So you need to do this part up here. Your stomach doesn't have teeth. So you want to chew your food slowly, chew it well, make sure you're drinking enough water. Um, typically half of your weight in ounces is what we normally suggest. If you're exercising and sweating a lot more then you would add more, but that's just like a little quick way to remember that. Um, don't eat distracted, you know, turn off the TV, turn off all distractions, put your phone away, you know, have a meal. If you're sitting with family, everyone should be sitting, gathered together, you know, um, talking about things that are not too upsetting also, cause you don't want to be upset when you're eating. Um, but definitely try not to eat distracted, uh, eliminate food allergies and sensitivities, um, feed your microbiome. You want to give them a lot of good, healthy fiber. You want to look at your poop, make sure you're pooping every day. Um, try to eat as much organic produce, um, organic meat and eggs as much as you can. Bone broth, learn how to make bone broth, learn how to make chicken stock. These are all important things. I'm sure all of our grandparents made them at some point. So learn how to do that. I have, um, actually I have a free handout on that. So if you're interested on my Instagram page, it's there. Um, eating fermented foods, limit your antibiotic use. Antibiotics should only be used. And I'm not a doctor or medical professional, but from what my doctors have told me, the ones that I have that I trust, it only should be used in a life or death situation, not for every cold. Um, but speak to your doctor about that. But you wanna make sure you're limiting it and you're giving your body the nutrients it needs. And also learning ways to manage your stress. Find an exercise you love, um, find some sort of movement in your life that you enjoy doing incorporating self-care and whatever yeah. form that means to you. It's okay to put yourself first and give yourself that permission and let everybody know that you're going to put yourself first right now, because that's what we need to do sometimes. Absolutely. And I'd like to just add a quick, quick note to the drinking the water. I, um, the half, uh, body weight in ounces, but I also add a pinch of salt. Yes. Sea salt. Or electrolyte. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, <laughs> I know we said this was going to be 30 minutes, but yeah. let's be real. We kind of said this was going to be anyways, but we hope that you enjoyed this. I know that I did. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my story and to listen to what we have to say and to learn a little bit more about nutritional therapy. Um, I know we both would love to work with you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to either one of us. I'm with, of course, I'm Haley and I'm with the Nourish the root cause. And you can find me at my website, find me on Instagram at the same name and uh, shoot me an email. If you are interested in learning how to support your gall liver, gallbladder, um, or if you're interested in detoxification. Yes. And thank you so much for coming and joining us. You can find me at I deserve health.com or on Instagram, I dot deserve dot health. And, um, I would be happy to work with anyone that's super tired and tired of feeling tired and wants to get their energy and life back and enjoy, you know, their family and things that they love to do. So thanks for joining us. If Thank you came you. this far, <laughs> <laughs> we should give like a little, like a uh, special treat for those that actually watch the whole thing. Yeah. Like a little code and we'll send them something for free. There we go. Hands we should... reach out to us. If you watch the whole thing, <laughs> the code, what's the code? Bio individual. <laughs> yeah, bio yeah. individual. Email us bio individual at one of our emails and we'll send you something. Send us your address and we'll mail you something in the mail, like a little surprise. <laughs> there we go. All right. Thanks again. <laughs> but if it's like two years down the road, I might not remember. So just <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. Thanks, Mary. Huh? Oh, gotta end it. <laughs>